10 billion robots means that there isn't i think one of the ways to really think about this is how much energy do you need to put in your own physical mental energy for a job to be done and it's collapsing everywhere the amount of energy that we need to do productive things which means we can do so much more productive things yeah it, i think the the scarcest resource in the world is time you know i'm working on it from the longevity standpoint of how do we add more years <clears throat> ai will be the most impactful agent in how in how we create we reach longevity escape velocity but i think people need to realize that we've been buying back time with technology you know google saved us hours of going to libraries mm -hmm. looking for that book and zoom is as you know <laughs> Normally, you and I would have to have flown me to London or you to LA to have this conversation. Yeah. Instead, it's microseconds of, you know, click and we're together. Um, so it's about buying back time, which is our most scarce resource. Well, I think there's two things. There's time, but there's also focus and flow, which I think are the other two interesting parts of that. Tell me. So we know how useful an amazing chief of staff or EA is. And everyone will have their own one. So like... How do you live longer? Well, first of all, exercise and eat well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't have that person, that entity that you trust telling you and advising you sometimes. So you cheat, you feel down, etc. No one will ever need to be alone again and can have a persuasive agent next to them, which is something insane to think about that knows exactly how to talk to you to put you into good habits. And it might be physical embodied as well. It might cook your breakfast and everything. Like, how difficult is it to have healthy meals all the time that are fresh? It's hard. With robots, it's easy. $100 a month, as you said. Yeah. And that's kind of crazy to think about from that longevity perspective. But then it's about our own biggest enemies are ourselves. You know, like I took off a few months because I need to clear my head and then read everything. And now I'm compressing it and putting it out and off we go again. If I'd had all the help that I needed, and it's not like the people around me didn't help, I would have done even better. But everyone now can have access to that which is going to be amazing for global mental health if we do this correct, and the capability of people to just achieve so much more by having that focus and flow. Talk about flow a little bit more. How do you think about flow? And, and do you think humans can enter flow with AI partners, AI agents? I think 100%. Like when I talk to all the creatives, you know, stability is, one, is generative media leader. How do the top artists use the AI? Do they use it to just make content? And push out? No, they're like, we like to jam with it, mm -hmm. you know? It helps us enter that flow state, especially when we customize the AIs for their catalog and things like that. And you can use it to discriminate, to do. Like, you should not use ChatGPT to write your essays. You should use it as a sparring partner to get you to think outside the box and look at things in different ways. That's the best way to use this. You know, like a very smart, precocious graduate that occasionally gets things wrong. I think... This AI is original creative, but we haven't built the systems to keep that flow state going. And the flow state is the one where everything is just kind of coming and there's no barriers between ideation, creation, and iteration. You're looping. 